Are you still asking questions? Are we still asking questions? Mystery is important to story-driven games. No, scratch that. Mystery is important to any story. And one of the things it does well is it allows you to ignore faults, the creator's shortcomings, inadequate world building, poorly developed characters, because at its core, we have this desire to have questions answered. And that's enough to hold us until the end, regardless of poor quality. But when it comes to storytelling and rounding off a mystery, sometimes the less you say, the better. Sometimes the less you know, the better. Because there is value in speculation and imagination. It allows the player or viewer to interact with your art and story in ways, in ways you, the creator, couldn't have imagined. Because mystery engages people. And with that engagement, it leads to theories, time and investment. And more importantly, endless possibilities. Endless possibilities. Which ultimately will surpass any answers you, the creator, may have had or could give. So storytelling is not just what you tell them, but it's what you don't tell them. End quote. Now that doesn't mean every body of work should have a compelling question without an answer. Christopher Nolan said, I've always believed that if you make a film with ambiguity, it needs to be based on a true interpretation. So you have to give the reader or player enough, not all. Because regardless of the actual structure or ending, there's value in interpretation. Because there's value in speculation and imagination. Fundamentally, to give an answer to a mystery, the answer has to be more compelling than the initial question. So what questions does the story give you? So what questions does the story ask of you? Are they compelling? Is this storytelling at its best? If I told you the earth was a living being and she could perceive and see everything we did and she had gone to war with another body centuries ago and she laid there frozen in time from a battle in an endless sea of nothing and the aftermath spawned more life on her immobile body, intelligent life. Do you have questions? Who, how, why, and when? Who are these bodies? Why are they here? Where are they? And what time did all this occur? How does this fit into the story of the inhabitants and these titans who are currently waging war with each other, inheriting the will of their maybe creators? Are they aware of their origins? Are they aware of the truth? Are they aware of their lies? Makes for an interesting story, right? Now what if that premises was flipped? And these titans were very much alive. But life was ending, and along with their passing, their bodies would become inhospitable. You would have the same questions. And Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 could leave it there. It has the character developments and tells you enough to fit everything I've just said earlier. But it goes further. It reveals all, masterfully. Storytelling at its best. There's very few endings I walk away from surprised. This game subverts your expectation throughout and gives you more than you ask. It gives more than you take. Fundamentally, to give an answer to a mystery, the answer has to be more compelling than the initial question. And most times, it's not. So are you still asking questions? But this is the most compelling story you'll ever come across. This universe gives more than it takes. So when it comes to storytelling, subverting your expectations, answering questions, Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 is king. Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 is the best JRPG game you've never played. Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 is king. King. King is king.